150 miles north of Boston, just past The Notch, nestled along the Vermont border, lies Littleton, New Hampshire. I call it the economic heartbeat of the North Country. We're at the epicenter between Montreal and Boston, Portland and Burlington. We're in a great area that's getting more and more popular. A little more than 6,000 residents call this place home, many of whom also stay in town for work. I think the people make it what it is. They're here to live, not to work um, all the time. Once voted one of America's 10 best towns and main streets by travel guide Fodors, this town has weathered more than one economic storm since it was incorporated in 1784. I like to look at Littleton as the proverbial phoenix that keeps rising from its ashes. Richard Alberini moved here from Framingham decades ago. The retired history teacher is now curator of the Littleton Area Historical Museum. Every time we've had an economic disaster, something happened to make it not happen. A new industrial park and a support network for the small businesses lining Main Street have helped offset factory shutdowns and the arrival of corporate retailers. The town of Littleton is exploding right now and it wasn't always the case. It's had its ups and downs and now it's really on the up. Anthony LaHoot's family has owned and operated America's oldest ski shop here for more than a century. Where we are now is the original location for 102 years. You know, my dad and uncles grew up above us. My grandfather was born in the back here. Littleton's history is rich and informs the present with tributes to some of its prominent figures sprinkled around town. This one here, if I flip it over, it says photographed and published by B.W. Kilburn, Littleton, New Hampshire. Benjamin Kilburn and his brother Edward turned a passion for photography into a business in the mid 1800s, quickly becoming the world's most extensive manufacturer of stereoscopic views. These are one of the two to 5,000 a week he used to produce. When you would take a snapshot, instead of getting one picture, you got two with one shot. When they would look through, they would adjust that. It would be off just a tiny bit so that it would give you that 3D effect. The business was such a success, it outgrew its first location and the next and expanded to this Cottage Street building that's still standing. This was television, Victorian television. These were just, they were it. I had some sixth graders in a few years ago, and one of them picked it up and he went, whoa, virtual reality. Another of Littleton's novel distinctions, a rather unusual one, is the Wallace Horse Cemetery. There aren't many in the United States. This is the final resting place for Molly, Maud, and Maggie, beloved companions of Myra and Eli Wallace. They could be seen all over town, right, with their horses and their carriage. The couple ran a print shop on Main Street in the 1880s and treated their horses like pets. These were their children. They loved these horses. Decades later, when Myra became sick and before she died, she had the horses put down and buried on a plot of their land. They were buried with their blankets, their feed buckets, all their tack, everything, all their earthly possessions went into the ground with the horses. But as the years passed, records of the cemetery fell by the wayside. When Route 93 came in, no one had an idea that there was a cemetery there. Then they, they found it. Paving the way for the future, unearth this historic site, now preserved in unique perpetuity. And there's a fun fact about the stereoscopic photographs that Benjamin Kilborn produced. Right, the device that you use to view them is called the American Stereoscope. It was invented by Oliver Wendell Holmes, the father of Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., who became the renowned U.S. Supreme Court Justice. So, there you go. fun fact. All right.